Orcus Harp Horror is finally back in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and this card absolutely breaks the deck. It's the one card Orcus was missing and now that it's back, the deck is pretty much back at full power. Of course, we could use three Harp Horror, but for now, it's at one and I'm going to be showing you guys how to play this deck competitively in today's format with Harp Horror back at one. So with that being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Let's get right into the deck profile and show you guys why Orcus is going to be one of the best decks post January ban list. Let's go. So here it is. This is the deck list. I really want to share it with you guys. I think it's absolutely insane. The fact that we have Harp Horror back at one makes this deck so viable. Orcus was really just missing this piece. And now the fact that it's back makes this deck very playable in today's format. Technically the January 1st, 2024 format, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Post ban list, Harp Horror being back at one, absolutely insane. And of course, we're playing the one harp horror now hopefully this card is going to come back to more than one in the future but it being at one makes this deck very viable and that's why of course we're playing the one by the way you guys can see here that it's still banned that's because technically on edo pro it hasn't updated the ban list yet but it's, it's back at one now, right? So we're playing the one Harp Horror. We're also playing three Orcus Nightmare, another very key combo piece for you. This card pairs very well in tandem with World Legacy World Wand. The special summon an Orcus monster is very important. So we're playing the one World Wand and then the three Nightmare, of course. We're also playing three Gearsu, the Orcus Mech Knight. Now this is the most important normal summon of your deck. This card on its own gets a lot of your combo started. It does multiple things for you. So on summon, of course, you're gonna be able to send a Harp Horror. It's pretty much a foolish burial for the deck. So really important to be playing this, of course, course to be able to get to your harp horror and get your combo started however the really cool thing about gearsu is that it's a level four that can turn itself into a tuner and it being turned into a tuner is very important because you can use this alongside one of your bestials which are level six of course this being a level four means that you can make level 10 synchros giving you access to stuff like this pattern giving you access to stuff like bear in the floor so it's very important to be playing these cards over here just because you're going to have a lot more access to stuff in your extra deck and it gives the card a lot of multi-use and multi-purposes right so that's why three gears are very important we're also playing two orcus symbol skeleton symbol skeleton is really powerful in uh, a lot of combos honestly this card helps you extend by special summoning orcus monsters that are in your graveyard and on top of that it pairs really well with Dingirsu because you can attach it back when it's banished to the Dingirsu then when you link Dingirsu in the graveyard you can put this in your graveyard again and with something like Babel which makes this a quick effect you can then use a symbol skeleton to summon Dingirsu on your opponent's turn and now it becomes another form of disruption for you right so I really like two symbol skeletons I think it's important to be playing two and then we're playing the one Orcus Babel of course very important you need to be playing the one one orchestrated return the reason I like this card is because it gets the Orcus names in the graveyard which is really important for you keep in mind a lot of these Orcus cards in hand don't really do much other than uh, Gearsu of course Course. but even with gearsu if you're opening multiple gearsu being able to use an orchestrated return on it is very important but on top of that all of these cards here they want to be in the graveyard and this kind of sends them to the graveyard so i do like playing the one orchestrated return as well as the one orcus crescendo it's pretty much your omni negate for the deck which is why you're playing the one of course and it's very searchable in this deck as well so that's it for the orcus cards an honorary orcus card over here is armageddon knight because we're playing three gearsu to get our harp horn in the graveyard typically i like to have more than three normal summons in the deck i think four to five normal summons are the perfect number and so the fourth normal summon is armageddon knight because you can then send your harp horror to the graveyard and get a lot of your combo started that way as well so armageddon knight kind of acts as a pseudo gearsu it's obviously not as good as gearsu because it can't make itself a tuner which means you don't have access to these but still very important card to be playing one of right so that's it for the orcus cards over here now for the hand traps and board breakers we're playing three ash three imperm very generic in today's format as well as three triple tactics talent i was actually very much considering playing three upstart goblin in this deck and the reason for that is because because bro why not play a 37 card deck however i was thinking about it a little bit more and i thought talents was maybe just a little bit better because going second having this option to be able to break boards with talents is really important as well and then of course going first if you do get hand trapped then you have the ability to draw cards rip a card out of your opponent's hand etc etc right so i just decided talents is actually the most competitive thing to play but bro what i want to i really want to play three upstart here but you know what three talents the best thing to play now i am also playing a horus package now the reason i'm playing the horus package is one it gets cards in your graveyard for you, which is really important because again, these cards, like I said earlier, in your hand don't really do much. And this kind of sets up a lot of your Orcus plays in that sense, but it's also level eight extenders for you, which means you have access to stuff like Hope Harbinger, which is a negate or a giant trainer, which is going to get you a lot of draws as well, right? So that's why I really like this engine. On top of that, they're big beaters that you can use to try to push for a lot more damage in turns two and turns three. So that's why I'm playing the Horus package. So three Mseti, one of the, I don't even want to say this name. I don't know how to say it, but one of this guy protection and then one of the happy, right? 
right? And then we're also playing two King Sarcophagus. You need to be playing King Sarcophagus, of, of course, with this engine. You could argue, and I've seen some people play three King Sarcophagus and then cut this guy or cut Happy, cut one of these and play kind of four names. Really up to you. I just like these ratios. I like having the extra monsters as well. So that's it for the Horus package. I'm also playing a Bestial package. <laughs> now, I know I'm playing a lot of packages, but I think it actually is very relevant to be playing all these packages because they all synergize really well together. So the really cool thing about the Bestial package, it's going to set up your branded regained and it's also going to be able to set up your branded beast which branded beast is a really powerful disruption for you regain is going to help you draw cards it's going to help you put cards back into your deck which is really important as well so i really like this package over here also these kind of act as hand traps for you remember how i was kind of talking about okay going second you want some kind of options like ash imperm and then tactics to break boards well against a lot of the decks in the metagame uh they are light or dark right so you're able to use the bestial monsters and they act as hand traps for you they're also really powerful again because they're big beaters and help you otk they give you access to your level 10 synchro they give you access to a lot of link plays as well so really important to be playing these ones in my opinion and also lubelion being a level 8 is very relevant because you can use it with one of your horus cards to give you access to the rank 8 monsters so that's it for the bestial package over here three lubelion one magna two Druis and two Sarnier, as well as one of the Regained and one of the branded beast 40 cards in the main deck insanely consistent main deck bro can even make it more consistent play three upstar i really want to play three upstar goblin but you know what no no tactics tactics is better guys tactics is better Three upstart though. Anyways, it's a 40 card main deck, very consistent. Moving on to the extra deck over here, we are playing one of the Bastille Dispatter. Of course, very powerful card in itself. One of the Baron de Fleur. We all know how powerful Baron de Fleur is, right? So one Baron, one Bastille Dispatter. We're playing two Dingirsu, one whole Harbinger, as well as one Giant Trainer. Now, big shout out to Lithium. Uh, I want to say a shout out to Lithium. The reason I want to say that is because I was thinking of playing the Horus package with Orcus. The Bestial package is kind of something that I saw in Lithium's build, and I really like that package. I really like the idea. And Giant Trainer is specifically a card that I really noticed in Lithium's build that I'm like, yo it actually makes so much sense to be playing it in this deck. So that's why I'm playing it. This could be honestly any other rank eight. I'm just playing Giant Trainer because I thought it was actually a really powerful card. Gets you drawn to a bunch of cards, which is really nice as well. And then we're playing the Waxus Code Talker, Appaloosa. We're playing the Long Gear Suit as well as two of the Galatea. Very standard in Orcus over here, all of these Link monsters. Apollo and Axis Code are also really easy to make when you're playing stuff like Talents because you can take your opponent's monsters and use them. So it's really easy in that sense. And then we're playing the one IP, one SP. I know if you guys are uh, building this deck, it's... It's not honestly the cheapest deck to play. So if you don't have SP, you can play Unicorn. But of course, if you have access to SP, I would play SP Little Knight. Then we're playing the one Barricade Borg Blocker as well as the one Link Karibo. Now, the reason you're playing Link Karibo, it may not make a lot of sense on first glance, but it actually is very helpful. So the reason it's very helpful is because Gearsu has a really cool effect. So if you control no other monsters, you can special summon a World Legacy token that's level one to both players' fields in defense position. Now, why is this really good? The reason this is really good is one, this point if they don't imperm your gear suit they can't imperm you after this because now they have a token on their side of the field but on top of that you can use that level one token to make a link karibo and for galatea and a lot of your link summons it needs effect monsters specifically so it needs two effect monsters in this case including an orcus monster and your link karibo can be an effect monster for you so that's kind of where the link karibo kind of comes in it's kind of one of those cards that's very niche but when it comes up it's absolutely insane now for this build lastly i do want to say i don't have a side deck built i don't know exactly how the four format is going to pan out post ban list of course there's going to be cards that are always going to be relevant lightning storm harpy's feather duster evenly matched all that stuff like that's six cards right there that you guys can play in your side deck but of course keep in mind it's always going to be up to where the meta goes and up to personal preference as well so that's why i'm not showing you guys a side deck even though i typically do but uh, guys i'm super excited harp horrors back to one this deck is relevant again it's so powerful and i'm excited to be playing orcist in the brand new format so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Orcus with the Horus and Bestial packages. I think these two packages make so much sense in this deck. They synergize so well. And on top of that, this deck has room to play board breakers like Talents and hand traps like Ash and Imperm, which is absolutely insane. I think this deck with Harpoor back at one is not only going to be really fun to play, but it's going to be really competitive in today's format. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We are uploading every single day in the month of December. And with the new ban list, there's a lot of stuff to be updating and I'm going to be showing you guys every single deck that I'm going to be updating here on the channel. If you guys want to stay tuned into all of that, make sure to subscribe. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Stanko signing out. Peace.
Wake up. We want you to get on your feet.